everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to model three of the most used depreciation methods in Excel. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up if you learned anything from today's video. Let's go. So this is the Excel file we're going to use today. It is divided in two sections, the input sections and the calculation sections. And in the calculation sections, we have the three methods we're going to learn today. The straight line method, the reducing balance method, and the modified accelerated cost recovery system, or MAX, which is used only for the US. Let's go to the inputs now. In the input sections, the first input we have is the asset lifetime, which is how many years we have to depreciate the asset. In this particular case here, we're going to use 20 years. This input is only necessary for the straight line and reducing balance method. The second input is the reducing balance multiplier or multiple. I'm going to explain what this is once we go through the calculations for the reducing balance method. Don't worry for now. Next, we have the asset value, which is the cost or the capex of the asset or machine we have to depreciate. In this case here, I'm going to assume a value of $1 million. Then we have the last input, which is the residual value, which means what is the value of the asset once this lifetime has gone by. And I do a very quick calculation here, which is the depreciable value, which is the difference between the asset value and the residual value. This is the value we're going to use in the depreciation calculation schedules. So let's go to the calculation sections and learn how to model it in Excel for each one of the methods. The first method we're going to see is a straight line depreciation method, which is the simplest one among the three. So how it works? Basically what I bring down here is the asset lifetime, which is 20 years. Then I make a calculation of the depreciation percentage per year. In the straight line depreciation method, what we're going to do, we're going to always depreciate the asset from a fixed value every single year. And this is given by the depreciation percentage. So how to calculate it? The depreciation percentage is simply 1 over the asset lifetime, as you can see here in the formula. So if you were to have a 10 years lifetime used for this particular machine or project, then the depreciation percentage would be 10%. And the depreciation value would be $90,000, which is 10% of the depreciable value, which is $900,000. That's it. Simple as that. So let me go to return here to the 20 years lifetime use. Let's see how I did now the depreciation schedules in here. So as a best practice, I always try to have an open book and value and the end book value of the asset. The open book value is just what is the value that we can still depreciate out of the asset. So if you are on period zero where the asset has not either started its operation, we're going to have the initial depreciable value, which is $900,000. Then we have the depreciation row, which is by how much we're going to depreciate the asset in this given year. And because we are on year zero, we should have a zero depreciation. And last, I calculate the end book value, which is only the difference between the open book value and the depreciation. As you can see here in year one, we're subtracting $900,000 out of $45,000. And that's it. So as I said before, the depreciation for a straight line depreciation method is always a fixed number, which in this case here is 5% of $900,000, which gives us $45,000. So what is the formula we have to add in this row here so that you capture this as long as you can depreciate the asset? It's very simple. You have to be mindful of two things. You cannot have depreciation on year zero, as we have here, and you should not have depreciation after year 20. So you can achieve this by using an or and if condition. So what are the conditions? If we are on year zero, or if the year we are now it is greater than the asset lifetime in years, then it should return zero. Otherwise, it should return the value of the depreciation, 
$45,000. So it is a very simple formula. And once you press enter and copy everything across, we're going to achieve the results you have in here. We're going to depreciate the asset in a fixed number, which is in this case here, $45,000. That's it. Let's go now to the reducing balance method, which is the second one in our list. This is a bit more complex, but still quite easy to do. So what we have in here, I still bring down here the asset lifetime, which is 20 years. Now I'm going to bring down the reducing balance multiple, which is four. And then I calculate the depreciation percentage. Let me change the multiple for one. And let me open here the straight line method so you can see how it works. So if you recall, the depreciation percentage in the straight line, it is only 1 over 20, which gives us 5%. If you come down here now, you can see that for the reducing balance, we also have 5% now, which is 1 over the 20 years lifetime. But what we're going to add now, we're going to multiply this percentage by the multiplier as you can see in the formula in here. If I go back here and change this number to four, you're gonna see that our depreciation percentage has, has increased to 20% now. So this is by how much we're gonna depreciate our asset every single year. There's one more difference between the straight line and the reducing balance. Now, instead of depreciating 20% out of the depreciable value, we're gonna depreciate 20% out of the open booking value. And if you, I press F2 here and you follow along here, you can see that the value for each one of the years represents exactly 20% out of the open book value. So that's the difference. In the straight line, you always depreciate a percentage out of the depreciable value, while in the reducing balance method, you always depreciate the asset out of the open book value. One more thing to notice is, let me just grab now the graph. And you can see how the depreciation changes over time in the graph in here. If you look in here, in the reducing balance method, you reduce much more during the first years of the operation of the asset and much less at the end of the lifetime. And this brings a few advantages to the project owner or to the asset owner that we're going to discuss in later videos. But for now, what's important to notice is that in the last year, the, the depreciation is going to change a little bit. Let's see how. Let me delete this. Let's go now to year 20. Here we are. In the last year of the operation of the asset, we're going to depreciate the full open book value. And that's what you need to take care of when you're setting your formula for the depreciation calculation. So how it works? We need to, we need to take care of three conditions now. So no depreciation on year zero. No depreciation after the lifetime of the asset, as you can see here near 21. And in the last year, you should depreciate the full book value. And if I press F2 here, you can see that that's what we have in the formula. First, I'm checking whether or not we are near zero. And if we are near zero, we're going to set that the depreciation is zero. Then I'm checking whether or not we are in the last year of the operation of the asset. And if it is, we're going to depreciate the full open book value so that the difference between the depreciation and the open book value is zero. And if we're not on period zero or in the last period of the lifetime use, then we're simply going to multiply the open book value by 20%. See how that's not necessary for me to check whether or not we are beyond the last year of the lifetime use of the asset because by depreciating the whole thing in the last year, I guarantee that in the last year of the lifetime use, the end book value will be zero, no matter what. So that's it for the reducing balance. Let's go now to the modified accelerate cost recovery system or marks. So here, what we have for this particular method in here, we're already given a few different schedules for different time frames. So these are fixed. And according to the tax authorities in the US, we are also given the percentage of depreciation for each one of the years according to the schedule we're going to use. So in this particular case here, we have a three years max. We're going to have a 33.33% depreciation in year one, 44.45% depreciation in year two, 
14.81% in year 3 and 7.41% in year 4. And if we add all together, we're going to get 100%. Okay? The calculation is pretty straightforward. Just have to multiply depreciation per value by the percentage given by the schedule. That's it. Nothing more. This is it for today. I hope you have learned anything. Please subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up if you learned anything from today. I hope to see you soon.